This is uh, Jim Fetzer, your host on The Real Deal, continuing research on Fukushima. I have two experts with me today, I'm very pleased to say. One is Christina Consolo, also known as Radchick, and also Lauren Moray from San Francisco, Oakland Bay Area, who's an independent geoscientist. Both of them have done extensive work on Fukushima. Uh, Christina, let me begin with you. You have had a radio show called Nuked Radio, and you have a website, Fukushima Facts. How did you get drawn into research on this catastrophe? Well, I, I noticed early on, uh, after the reactors exploded, we already had uh, symptoms of possible fallout in my area of the country, in southeast Michigan. I had the metallic taste. I noticed a few weeks after that a lot of the pine trees started turning red and uh, later on that summer I even noticed mutations in some of the plants and, and young trees that were growing around here and that's when I really started looking into atmospheric transport and, um, and seeing what I'll, whatever I could find about past nuclear accidents to try to figure out what was happening with this one because there just was no news about it at all. Had you done any research on, you know, in this area? I mean, was that anything you'd ever studied in school or whatever? Well, Chernobyl happened when I was a senior in high school, and we spent quite a bit of time studying it back then, and I was very intrigued by it. And then I have uh, friends and family that work in the nuclear industry, so it's always been kind of part of my life, and I also was a, a big supporter of it for a while before I really knew the truth of how dangerous these plants were. Well, it looks to me like you've done quite a lot of research on it. Loren, I know you have been noticing some signs of contamination in, along the Pacific Coast and even in uh, Berkeley and in San Francisco. Can you, can you tell us uh, some of those indications that things are not going well? <clears throat> well, uh, I really noticed it um, at Christmas, this past Christmas of uh, 2012, when I was traveling on public transportation and um, also walking up and down the sidewalks, seeing people you don't normally see and babies that don't normally come out um, into the public view. And what I noticed, which was really alarming, is that um, I saw... Uh, many indications of birth defects in babies that were born just before or uh, since the Fukushima disaster on March 11, uh, 2011. And I knew right away because I was seeing Down syndrome babies and toddlers, uh, uh, babies with uh, defective eye defects, birth defects, um, and the, the brain and the eyes develop in the first month, and when uh, an embryo is exposed in that stage, very often the brain and or the eyes are damaged. Uh, I also noticed um, a toddler who'd been born in uh, the month of uh, sometime in late February before Fukushima happened, and she was about almost two years old, uh, riding on a bus, and I, I moved around from the seat I was in to uh, be able to face her and the, her, um, her babysitter. And I looked at this baby, and the, the woman who was taking care of her, an older African-American woman, noticed that, and she said, this baby is a dwarf. I love her but she will never be taller than she is now. And I said, well, how old is she? When was she born? And she said, late February 2011. So then I knew that um, radioactive iodine had affected the endocrine system, which is the pituitary, thyroid, and um, uh, what's the one? Um, adrenal glands which control growth, organ function, everything in the body. And uh, I realized that it had to be Fukushima uh, radioactive iodine that had damaged her. So uh, that, was, that was particularly important to see these birth defects expressed already uh, a year and a half after Fukushima because the babies and the unborn are the most susceptible to damage by the ionizing radiation. 
And what Dr. Levan said, he did a study during bomb testing in uh, Alberta, Canada, and other parts of Canada, but he was uh, writing about the effects and researching the effects of the very large hydrogen bomb tests that the Soviets did in the Arctic. And he reported in this landmark paper that damage to in a developing organism, uh, an organism in the developmental stages uh, has a, a 10 to 100, um, a 10 to um, a mil t million times greater damaging effects on that organism than uh, after they're, they're born or they're in later stages of their lives. So the litmus test for ionizing radiation, of course, is the unborn and the babies. And what we're seeing are increases in infant mortality across the U.S. as well as around the world, decreases in fertility. And then uh, very strange things like uh, I've seen two cases in the last week of men reported with breast cancer. And one man who lived in Massachusetts, he was in his early 40s and an athlete, had breast cancer twice in both of his breasts. So uh, these are just some of the indications. The environment is also contaminated. There have been reports about uh, radiation levels in dried seaweed, or they call it nori in Japan, in the Chiba area, area which is between Tokyo and Fukushima, and also in uh, seaweed off of the West Coast. And We'll talk in more detail during the interview, but we wanted to give you um, first an update on uh, the Fukushima typhoons. This would be from October 15th to the present, and then, um, and then uh, compare that to 28 signs we have now that the West Coast is just absolutely getting fried. This is the West Coast of the, of the Pacific uh, coastline of, of North America. Uh, and we'll just talk about biological effects and, and uh, the effects on infants, um, also um, uh, the environmental effects, and then we'd like to cover uh, this very alarming increase in nuclear power. Who is getting involved now? It's China taking over the British system. And also uh, the fact that Janet Napolitano, who's head of Homeland Security, has now been hired as president of the University of California, which is the biggest weapon of mass destruction um, uh, producer in the world. And that seems to be on the increase. And no doubt they will be using nuclear weapons, many nuclear weapons, on civilian populations not only in Iraq and Afghanistan, Lebanon, Gaza, but um, they're going to be using them in, um, in the developed, the superpower countries as well. <laughs> 